welcome back to part three. So for this part, we're gonna keep working on laying out these products into a grid. And I decided to change the way we're doing the grid so that we can actually lay it out ourselves instead of using these table components. Because what I wanna do is talk about Fluxbox a little bit. So Fluxbox is a new layout system that um, it's in CSS3 and you should be using it now because most, actually every modern browser I think supports it. Um, you do have to do some browser prefixing in some cases, but there are things like auto prefixer that you can use that'll automatically do that for you in Webpack. Um, so what I'm gonna do is show you that I'm gonna put things into rows going down, or sorry, columns going down and then rows across here. Um, the, uh, the main container here is going to be a flex container that's going to be flex direction row so I'm going to lay things out in a row and then in each of these rows I'm going to put things into columns so going back to the code here uh, yeah, we're going to go back to the product grid component and you can see I got rid of all the table stuff so we're going to get rid of all this table junk and I added a CSS file this is how you just import a CSS file with React if you're using Webpack. Um, you can just import this CSS and then the CSS will be added and I can say class name product grid and then in my in my CSS file I can say product grid. Here's my flex direction row. So you can see that's the main container. I'm making the things inside of it format as a row. So here's the frames and here's the flight controllers. Here are the frames and flight controllers. So I'll add another one into this row. And then the third thing will be motors. It's actually meant to do two uh, motors. And then these should appear adjacent to them horizontally. So it'll be a row. Uh, speed controllers will be the fourth. So these should appear, yeah, motors and speed controllers they're right next to each other um, we will do just a little bit of um, margin around them how about that and I use EM which is a unit based on font size All right so here's frames here's flight controllers here's motors and I'll say I'll do something like um, minimum width EM. How about that? So these are all kind of like uniformly. Um, well, that didn't work. Uh, there, I want them to be all uniformly uh, sized somewhat. May not really need to do that, but we can get back to that. So I think speed controllers. We're gonna have one, and then the next thing I want to have is um, uh, how about. Uh, cameras so on a FPV quadcopter it's first person view so you're gonna have a camera on there and then you're gonna have a video transmitter to transmit the camera so frames flight controller motor speed controller camera video transmitter that should be enough space to lay out all those components and then we'll have all these I'll have check boxes here so you can check the one you want and on the side, we'll tabulate how much it'll cost. So let's start. Let's let's look at actually putting these product tiles in here. So one way to do it would be to list each of these out individually like this, which kind of sucks. So let's not do that. What we can do is something different. We can iterate through all of the keys in this object and then spit out components. So I can say object dot keys this is a function in JavaScript where I can get all the keys of an object and I'll do that for frames and then I'll say for each because that'll return an array and it'll be key and um, what I'm going to do now is render a product tile um, actually what we'll do is map so that returns an element and then this will return everything spit out here so we'll say render a product tile with a product equal to um, 
frames for that key. Maybe this will work. Yep, so there it is, rendered all of them out. So we can get rid of this stuff. We don't need that anymore. And then I'm just gonna um, inspect just to make sure I don't have any errors, and we do. So this, this React error right here is because I don't have a key. And what we'll do is we'll just use the iterator as the key. And the reason that React is complaining about this is because um, when you render a list, React needs to know which index position on a list to update if the properties change, and it needs to find it by a key. So you have to provide a key when you have a list of elements. And then th these will go away as we use all of these. So here are all the frames, which is good. That's good. And then um, next we'll do, we can do this for um, the um, flight controllers. So that'll be FCs. And at this point, you're going to notice this is a repetitive thing. So your question would be, can we fix this and make it not repetitive? And the answer would be, well, for sure. Of course we can. So I mean, I can simply just create a function here that says, um, uh, let's, let's call it uh, product renderer and I'll pass in products and I can just simply return something like this right so that map will return an array and then I should simply be able to do so we'll get rid of, we'll just do this in one line here. And we'll say product render uh, frames. And then, yep, as we can see, still the same. So this is kind of nice because now we can not have our logic duplicated. So I can say FCs right there. And then down here, I'll render out the motors. Oops, that's capitalized. And then down here, I will render out ESC. And this will be cams. And this will be uh, VTX. So now we've got all these products rendered, and that was much, much easier than doing all that product uh, sorry, um, table stuff that we had before. And then now they're kind of laid out the way we want them based on that flex box. Uh, we will have to do something about making this responsive, but we can tackle that after we finish laying these out the way we want them to. So, uh, what to do next? The other thing is I wanna sort these by price. Do you see the price here? I want to have the most expensive things at the bottom. And then it looks like I screwed up some image names in some of these, but we can fix that later. So, um, what should we do? Let's say, let's, let's take a look at uh, sorting by price. So the trick is these products, they are, uh, they're just going to be a set of objects and these objects can be in whatever order. They're not particularly sorted. So what you can do is, again, we're gonna have to iterate over the keys in the object. I'll just say const sorted because I want this to be a sorted array here. And then I'll say, um, what will we do? We'll say sort um, So yeah, first we'll do this, then I'll say sorted. So object.keys is gonna return an array of keys, right? So 
if we want to sort these, I'm going to say sorted.sort, and then you give it a comparator function with A and B. And then the trick here is that this is an error function. So the trick is that we are going to actually have to grab um, A and B from products based on the key, and key the A and B is going to be a key. So what, what we're going to do, it's going to look something like return products A dot price minus products B dot price. This is going to look a little funky, but this is how you're going to have to sort it because you're going to grab that based on the um, based on the key and then return the price from the corresponding product. And then instead of doing this, you're going to map over sorted, and that'll still be the key. So you can see now it's sorted at 25, 32, 49, 74, et cetera, et cetera. Looks good. So that is how you want to sort that. And then the next thing that we're going to probably want to work on is we want to lay these out. I want to put checkboxes here or something, or like so I can click these and then it'll tabulate a price on the side. So let's go ahead and try to add click events onto these. Um, I think what we'll want to do is just let's just demo this out really quick. So I'll say. I'll say on click and I'll just do an arrow function here and then the arrow function is just going to say console.log clicked. So if we got that to work, which we didn't get that to work, <laughs> um, we could figure that out. I think the problem is you're going to want to put that down inside the component. So we'll put it on this div itself. See how that goes. Yeah. So the reason we couldn't do that is you can't you can't put it on the definition of the component like that, the on click. You have to actually put it on um, on an actual element. So that's where that click's going to work. Uh, all right, so this is where Redux is going to come in handy. So we're going to have to wire up Redux to do that. And that'll be next video. But I think next video what we'll do is we'll start styling this stuff. So for now, thanks for watching.